Hello, in this Excel tutorial video for Chem 1B, we're looking at the, we'll be looking at the data analysis for experiment 15. What I've done so far is entered in my raw data. You'll notice I've labeled each of the trials. I've put in headers for the categories of information I've added. I've chosen to enter the volumes. I'll go ahead and calculate the concentrations here in Excel. I've entered the temperature in Kelvin and the time in seconds. I've also entered some key constants that I know I'm going to use in several cells, including the concentrations of the stock solutions of iodine, bromate, and the HCl, the total volume of each of these reaction mixtures. If you look carefully at the procedures, it comes out to 50 milliliters in each case, and the gas constant. I want to start by correcting sig figs. Excel tends to just show the last non-zero digit, but if I look at the concentrations in my notes, I have an extra zero on the end of each of these. And I, I think my accuracy in using the graduated cylinder goes to one decimal place in the number of milliliters. The other thing to notice here is that I'm putting units in a separate cell from the number. If you put the units in the cell with the number, then you can't use them in calculations. I can adjust an entire range of cells using the increase, de decrease decimal um, if I'm trying to go to the same number of digits after a decimal place. The temperature I'm happy with, my time I'm happy with, so I'm ready to keep going. And the first step I want to do is relative rate. <coughs> and this is in units of 1,000 per second if you're doing the workup according to the lab procedure. And I can calculate the relative rate as that 1,000 divided by my time, and my time was in seconds. Okay, and I can drag that down to, to fill the number of cells. Now again, it's displaying too many decimal places, so I'm going to cut some of these off. And the other problem I have is that this label cell carries over. One of the things you can do is you can force it to use multiple lines. And you do that on a PC at least with Alt enter. I'm going to do that a couple times here so that I keep my cell column relatively narrow and the entire label appears. And I can come in and I can add my units for time and temperature in this rate, or in this way. Okay, So that gets me set up. I have a relative rate. I have my time and temperature. I want to calculate my concentrations now. So this is going to be my concentration of iodine. This cell will be my concentration of bromate. Or sorry, not cell, column. This column will be my concentration of the hydrogen ion. Okay. And my iodine calculate iodide calculation is just a dilution calculation based on the total volume of the reaction mixture and how much I added. And so the initial volume was 10 milliliters. And I'm going to multiply that by the concentration. Remember, I'm going to drag this down so I want that absolute cell reference and I can toggle that by hitting F4. And I'm going to divide by the total volume there. And I'm going to use an absolute cell reference for that. And that's just a standard dilution calculation. And I can copy that down. Bromate's going to be done similarly. It's the, the volume of bromate times the stock concentration divided by the total volume. And the hydrogen ion is likewise the volume of hydrogen ion times the stock concentration divided by the, I should make that an absolute reference, divided by the total volume. Okay, each of these is again not displaying the proper number of significant figures. I have two significant figures in the concentration of my stock solution. So I'm going to ensure that each of these is displaying two significant figures. Now Excel is going to keep track of the extra decimal places um, in the calculation, so I don't need to worry about that. Okay, I'm going to label this whole range as um, concentrations. And if I want to center this over the range of cells, I can select those cells, and this little A in here is a merge and center, and that will give a nice heading to that group of cells. The next thing I want to do is to estimate the 
um, reaction order. And I want to do that for iodine, for bromate, and for the hydrogen. That's this, the part of the experiment that we use the concentrations for. And when we're doing reaction order, I want to come back to, to PowerPoint for a minute and talk about how we're going to get that. Recall that if we take the ratio of the rates, that that was going to be equal to, let's say A and B, that was going to be equal to the concentration of a given species in A to the concentration of a given species in B, all to the, the exponent for that, the, the rate order for that species. If I do a log of rate A over rate B, that would then equal <coughs> log of concentration A over concentration B <coughs> to the n. Now, properties of logarithms say I can do that as being equal to the same thing as n times the log of the ratio of the concentrations. And this lets us rearrange so that n is equal to the log of rate A over rate B divided by the log of concentration A over concentration B. So this is the function that I'm going to enter into Excel now. I need to choose which reactions I use and in this trial 2 the only thing that changed relative to trial 1 was the amount of iodine that I added. So here relative to trial 1, this is going to be the log of the rate for trial 2 divided by the rate for trial 1 divided by the log of the concentration of iodide in trial 2 divided by the concentration of iodide in trial 1. And that's showing exactly 1, which is unusual so I'm going to expand it a little bit and it looks like it, it really came out that way and that's sort of nice but we have a couple others we can use we can compare trial 5 to trial 1 so let's calculate that one the log of the ratio of the rates divided by the log of the ratio of the concentrations okay I'm going to reduce the number of sig figs so it's easier to read there. I have another one. I can compare 5 to 2. I'm going to go ahead and stick that in this cell here. And I can take the rate of trial 5 divided by the rate of trial 2 divided by the log of the concentration in trial 5 by trial 2. It really doesn't matter what's on top or what's on bottom but I don't want to be copying these down. I need to choose the right rates so that only one thing is changing. And if I take the average of these predicted reaction orders, oops, I need to put the equal sign in front there. That comes out to about 0.94, and I'm going to say that that reaction order is about 1. I have some experimental um, uncertainty here for sure, but it looks like that reaction order is about one. For the bromate, in looking at the bromate, I changed the amount of bromate in trial three, and that's the only one that's different. So I'm going to go ahead and compare trial three to trial one for bromate. The same equation, the log of the relative rates, of the ratio of the relative rates, divided by the log of the ratio of the concentrations, but now I'm going to use that bromate concentration. That comes out to about 0.94. That's the only one I had, so I'm going to do an approximate order of 1. And for hydrogen, it's trial 4. The ratio of the rates, or the log of the ratio of the rates, divided by the log of the ratio of the concentrations. In the next video, we'll go over calculating the activation energy using the Arrhenius equation.